Welcome to the Allegrativity Powercast with Allegra Sinclair. Get ready to punch fear in the throat, show up, and tell your story. Allegra Sinclair is here to help you become the powerful woman you are meant to be. It's finally time to get unstuck and reveal how fabulous you are. And it's time for your host, Allegra Sinclair. Hey, this is Allegra. Welcome to the podcast. Today's episode is entitled, Why Lack of Personal Boundaries is Killing You. Now, I think there are some people who are more susceptible to this particular condition than others, but personal boundaries are important for several reasons. They serve as barriers to protect your self-esteem. They're tools for establishing limits with others and communicating that there are certain things that you won't tolerate, certain behaviors, certain interactions, certain people that you are unwilling to accept in your environment. People without personal boundaries commonly, routinely end up in less than ideal situations and relationships. Without limits, you are a victim to the whims of those around you. So if you don't set any rules, that means that you are going to be ruled by those around you. If you don't have personal boundaries, the reason why I say the lack of personal boundaries is killing you is that personal boundaries are about respecting yourself and demanding respect from others. So if you don't respect yourself and hold other people accountable to respect you, that kills us. Maybe it doesn't kill you physically, but it kills you emotionally. It kills you psychologically. It kills you in all the ways that women need to guard our hearts. It kills that warm, sweet, gooey center that is who you are uniquely, daily. That special magic that you bring is killed when you don't protect yourself with personal boundaries. It's kind of like, okay, so here comes my inner nerd. I remember in Star Wars, not Star Wars, Lord have mercy, in um, Star Trek, The Next Generation, when um, Jean-Luc Picard was fussing at some alien or another. I don't even remember. But my favorite line was he said, uh, he drew a line in the sand and he said, hey, here's the line right here and no farther. (laughs) I think they parodied that on the Big Bang Theory also. But that lived with me for a while because I thought that's kind of magical. Wait, I can set a line and tell people they can only come here and no further. I kind of like that. So then I set about trying to figure out how I could do some of that line setting in my personal life. So one of the first things I thought was, okay, I need to tell people, right? I am a communicator. So my first strategy for helping you set up personal boundaries is that you communicate openly about what your boundaries are. And when people cross your boundaries, it's important and your responsibility to tell them that. So many times this is as simple as refusing a request, right? You may be, uh, they may even ask you to provide more explanation in some circumstances, but no is a complete sentence. And others are unable to give you what you want if you don't tell them what that is, right? So that's only fair. So number one, communicate openly. Two, value yourself. I could have actually reversed the order on these, but you have a responsibility and the privilege of setting your own boundaries as you see fit. Few people will treat you better than you demand. Did you catch that? Few people will treat you better than you insist on being treated. So we all have to take responsibility for taking care of ourselves. No one else is going to take responsibility for your self-esteem and well-being. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody else in the universe is um, laying in wait like some sort of snake to attack you. I'm not suggesting that. But they don't have as vested an interest as you do in protecting your well-being. So once you decide that you want to value yourself, part and parcel of that is then defining yourself. Decide who you are, decide what you want to be, and how you deserve to be treated. What are you willing to accept from others? And here's a hint. What are you no longer willing to accept? Because what you're willing to accept can change. You are a very different person today, I suspect, than you were five years ago. So it's entirely possible that what you're willing to accept today is different than what you were willing to accept five years ago. And that's okay. You can define yourself and then redefine yourself. But if you don't define yourself, then the rest of the world will do it for you and you won't like it. So we've talked about communicating openly, valuing yourself, and then defining yourself. So the fourth tactic that I found was considering where I needed to put a higher priority on me. I know that sounds silly, but what you focus on, you get more of. 
what you measure, you improve, right? So we know in the business world that what we make a priority benefits from that status. So if you make yourself a priority, that changes and that helps you with establishing and maintaining your personal boundaries. Other people are important, but they're not any more important than you are. If you take care of yourself first, you're in a better position to take care of others. If you have a heart that wants to serve and help others, I'm not mad at that. I have that too. However, if I run myself ragged, then I'm no good to anybody else. If I take care of myself first, I'll be a better friend, spouse, employee, all the jobs that we have as women that are important to us. I forgot parents, see, because I don't have children. But you will be a better parent, (laughs) spouse, employee, friend, if you take good care of yourself first. It is not noble for you to fall to pieces while you take care of everybody else. I said it. It's not noble. It's not selfless. It's not cute. It's not charitable. It's not Christian. It's not any of those things that we tell ourselves when we put ourselves last. Putting yourself first, putting a priority on taking care of yourself is all of those things. It is important. It is critical. It is magical. It is Christian. It is all those good things. Now, you may not need to set new personal boundaries in some areas of your life. So maybe you want to focus, right, and consider where you need to set limits. So maybe you need to stop volunteering for every new project that somebody suggests at work, right? Maybe if there will be eight projects suggested, you could volunteer for four (laughs) instead of the eight that you normally do, right? Maybe you need to stop accepting emotional abuse from a friend, male or female, even if it comes under the umbrella of, oh, I'm just kidding, See, if you perceive it as abusive, it's abusive. I don't need to define that for you, okay? So maybe you um, need to stop loaning money to people who never pay it back. I don't know what your personal boundaries are, but I do know that you get in life what you're willing to tolerate. So I just want to know, what are you no longer willing to tolerate? So there's uh, three final suggestions I have for you. One, make your boundaries firm and clear. Mean it. If you're going to say it, mean it. Make your boundaries reasonable, but clear to others. If others know where you stand on certain issues, then there's less chance for confusion, miscommunication, conflict, drama. It is possible to set boundaries that are too strict. You will know that because you'll feel that if your boundaries are too strict. And then you can loosen them up. Okay. So I want to make sure that your boundaries are firm and clear, but I also want you to be flexible. Now, does that seem like I'm contradicting myself? Maybe, but there's a difference between firm and flexible are not opposite conditions, right? So I don't have to follow my own rules 100% of the time. I can decide who and what I want to let in and what's best to keep out. So I can be flexible in that. Studies have shown that people with some flexibility in their personal boundaries tend to have the best combination of happiness and success. Being too rigid can be just as problematic as being too lax. Finally, learn to say no when you need to. I love it. One of my friends tells me all the time, no is a complete sentence because I I tend to say no and then explain why I said no. And here's the thing. People don't care why you said no. People don't want to hear no necessarily, but no is not fatal. So if I say no and I'm just done with the sentence, it feels better. It tastes delicious. I don't have to go into a whole dissertation about why I said no, because it doesn't matter. Whatever it is they ask me for, they're not going to get it. So if I explain it, are they going to get it? No. If I don't explain it, are they going to get it? No. So if it's a situation that requires a little bit more conversation, explain it. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you undermine your personal boundary when you hedge and you hem and you haul and you overqualify each boundary. If I have a boundary that you can't drink alcohol in my home and you come into my house with, I'm trying to think of the name of an alcohol, you come into my house with beer and I say, wow, you know, I don't have alcohol in my home. And my friend says, oh, well, can I just bring in this beer? No. Complete sentence, right? Because the answer is no. Now, if I say no, because, you know, this and then this and then this, it feels like I'm negotiating and I'm not negotiating. I'm just communicating clearly, openly and firmly that, no, you can't bring beer in my house. You see how that felt different when I just said no? And I didn't say it meanly. I didn't say, no, I hate you. Leave and never come back. Or no, I never liked you. And by the way, your purse is ugly. I just said no. 
But when I said no, because, and then I started to say more, I physically felt different. And it felt like a negotiation. Like if they kept at me, they might wear me down. And I don't want to communicate that. So learn to say when it's it's needed. Boundaries are limits on what you'll accept from others. So avoid getting into the habit of always trying to make sure everybody else is happy. Healthy boundaries and just a little bit of selfish go hand in hand quite nicely. Even more than that, having healthy personal boundaries is an exercise in caring for and respecting yourself. It's a demonst- it's a signal to the world about how you feel about yourself. You have a right to expect a certain level of respect and consideration from others. Try saying no to somebody today. The world won't come to an end. I want you to find somebody today, find an opportunity to say no to someone, and then come back and let me know that the world didn't end. If your lack of personal boundaries is killing you, now is a great time to start taking better care of yourself. Adequate personal boundaries are not only good for your self-esteem and confidence, they're also great for your general mental health and other aspects of your life. If you put yourself in a better position, then you'll be able to do the things that you need to do and to care for friends, family, and the rest of your circle. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time. Now you've been given permission to be more powerful and influence more people. If you've enjoyed this episode, please head over to AllegraSinclair.com slash iTunes and leave a review. It will help Allegra get the message out to more women that they can punch fear in the throat, show up, and tell their stories. We'll see you next time on the Allegrativity Powercast with Allegra Sinclair.